Hey painting friends, it's Stoof here. Welcome back to my channel. I recently posted a poll on Instagram asking for your input on what painting tutorial you'd like to see next. To my surprise, you guys voted on this lily pad painting. So that is what our tutorial will be today. If you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any more painting tutorials like this one. All right, painting friends, for our materials today, I'm using an 11 inch by 14 inch canvas panel. I have a cup of water I'm gonna keep right here for cleaning my brushes. I have a paper palette, disposable paper palette. I like to use this neutral gray color. We are using acrylic paints today. I have a variety of heavy bodied acrylic paints here. I'm using titanium white. This is a midnight blue. This is light ultramarine blue. This is deep violet. This is burnt umber. This is olive green. If you have a sap green, this one's pretty close to that. I have a phthalo green, which is on its way out the door. It's starting to dry out. So you might see me use a bit more water with this one. I have a bronze yellow. If you have a yellow ochre, that's pretty close to this one. I have a cadmium yellow light. I have a primary magenta. And this is like this, particular brand's primary blue, but it's more of like a cerulean blue if you have a color like that. Uh, and then for my brushes today, I also have the paper towel there. For brushes, I have a large angled brush. If you have a flat tip brush, that would also work. I'm gonna use that for mostly just blocking in the background colors. I have a half inch filbert brush. This is gonna be nice for starting to block in some of the lily pads. I have a small round tip brush. This is like a number two, number four round tip brush, probably a number two. Uh, and this one, I think this might be nice for putting in some of the flowers in the foreground. And then I have a liner brush that's gonna help me with getting a little bit of the details in those blades of grass uh, in the foreground. I'm gonna hopefully use all these brushes. I might get lazy and not use them all, but we'll see. All right, now that we went over our materials, let's get started with this tutorial. All right, to get started with this tutorial, I am going to take my large angled brush and we're just gonna block in some of the water color. We're gonna pretend like the lily pads aren't there and we're gonna block in some color for the shoreline and the foreground. And then after that, we'll start to add in a bit more of the details. So first I'm just dipping my water my brush in the water and then I'm just dabbing that off so there's not any dripping water from my paintbrush. And then I'm going to start with, I'm gonna start with the trees. So we have reflections of some trees in the top of the canvas here. I'm gonna mix my olive green with my primary blue and some magenta and a little bit of white. I'm just gonna block in, in general, where these trees are gonna go. I'm gonna have one about here. And I'm not using a particularly thick amount of paint here. I'm just kind of trying to get some color on there. Gonna mix a little bit of light ultramarine, maybe a little bit of phthalo green in there, a little bit more of that. Uh, primary magenta color and block in another tree here. I want the trees to be a little bit varying in color. I'm not sure if they're the exact same species of tree, but they don't look like the exact same color in the reference photo. So I'm going to keep that into the painting. Mixing a bit more color here. You want to have like a cool neutral green. Let's do a little bit of ochre in there too. Okay, and do a little more on this tree. That's in this corner. And while these trees are still wet, now I'm gonna clean off this brush very well, get the extra paint off the brush on the 
paper towel, and now we'll start to mix in our sky color. So we're gonna mix that midnight blue with white and some of our primary blue color, cerulean blue, whatever you wanna call it. And that's pretty close to what I'm looking for. Uh, you might not have these exact same colors because these are particular colors for this brand of paint I'm using, Magic Fly here, uh, but you can probably find similar colors, like a uh, Prussian blue, a thalo blue is probably a little bit too warm for this midnight blue. If you have a thalo blue, you might want to maybe mix it with ultramarine blue. Try to get more of the color. But you can get a pretty similar color. Now I'm just trying to fill in the little white spaces. And I'm keeping the trees a little bit blurry. Just fuzzing them out. And I can go back over that later. But I just wanted to block in where the trees are and keep it pretty loose and so it looks like a reflection. Mixing more of my white with my midnight blue. All right, and I'm gonna keep working in this area this is one of the great things about acrylic paint and one of the tricky things. You have to work quickly, but if you're able to work quickly, it can give you a really nice look and let you complete a painting in one day. Rather than oil paints, you'd have to go back and layer over this once it's dried, uh, or you would have to do like an underpainting and then like work very carefully in between sections there. Uh, so I'm gonna put this angled brush down for a sec and take my filbert brush out I'm gonna take just some white with a little bit of that primary blue, cerulean type blue. Get that nice and blended on my brush, on both sides of the brush, going back and forth. And I'm just gonna put that right here at the bottom. Just doing up and down brush strokes, pulling that color down. Now I'm taking the extra paint off of my brush, so it's just, the pigment's on there, but there's no like floating paint. And I'm very lightly pressing here and just kind of letting this blend down into that other color. And this is a kind of a stubbly brush. It's not a very soft bristled brush, so it's not giving me like a perfect smooth, soft transition. Uh, so if you have a really soft synthetic brush, that might do a little better job than what this brush is doing for me. But I still, I like that painterly look for this. All right, so that's good. Now I'm gonna go back, take a little bit more of my phthalo green and my primary magenta and some olive green. It's still a bit too brown for me. Uh, take a little more midnight blue in there. Some white, and let's do a little yellow. Ooh, that's a strong yellow. <laughs> so we're gonna add more blue and a little more thalo. And a tiny, tiny bit of that magenta color. Okay, so now we've got this brush covered up on both sides and we can just go back in and very gently hold the brush and let it like bounce around to give us these like fuzzed out looking branches and limbs of the tree. And do a little more midnight blue. And it's the trees are upside down in this reflection. So right side up, they're like standing at the edge of the pond. So all the branches are kind of coming up instead of down because it's a reflection. Okay, over here. Pushing the paint around, not using a whole lot of force. Okay, a little more over here. And if your paint is starting to pick up some of that sky color, that's okay. That'll just end up looking like you have little pockets of 
that sky visible in between the uh, bunches of branches. Okay, I'm really liking how that's looking so far. Looks very painterly, like we have like a kind of distorted reflection. Uh, now I'm gonna take a little bit of my purple, both of my greens, midnight blue. I wanna get a deep, darker blue just to build up the shadows a little. And a couple of these spots just to give a little variation so it's not just like a flat blob of color. And then we can do little highlights as well. So I'm gonna take a little bit more of that yellow and some white and a little bit of that light ultramarine. And we can just block in a couple little highlights above where we put in some shadows. And again, this just helps to build up that depth of the reflections. Okay, I'm liking how that looks so far. Now, hopefully this is still a little bit tacky where you had that sky color. We're gonna move back to the angle brush and start working our way down, blending until we get to the edge of the water. While I am thinking about the edge of the water, I'm just gonna quickly take a little bit of that color and decide where I want the edge of my water to be. And I want something kind of like this. So uh, if you look from top to bottom, about halfway is about right here. Uh, what I'm doing is putting the top of my, where water meets shore, just under, about an inch under that halfway point. And then it's just about an inch up from the bottom on this side. So you kind of do like a squiggly little line, just like that. Okay, that's where water meets the shoreline. Now I'm gonna go back and keep working on the water, getting all of the extra paint cleaned off of that brush in the water. So I got a nice clean brush now. And going back to this midnight blue color, let's see if we can match this color again. So it's just white, midnight blue, and a little bit of that cerulean type blue. Yeah, I'm gonna do a little bit more cerulean, I think, because I want it to be a little more vibrant. So that's pretty close. Uh, I'm gonna make it a hair lighter. I think it is starting to get a bit tacky and drying a little bit more now. I'm doing uh, brush strokes going up and down and left and right, so I get good coverage of the paint on the canvas panel. Uh, I don't wanna see any little white spaces peeking through here. All right, so I just went over that spot one more time, uh, kind of blending that to try to get good even coverage and let that paint be nice and uh, wet again. Now I'm gonna mix in some burnt umber, a little bit of purple, and more of the midnight blue, and the cerulean type of blue. So see how that color is just more of a neutral, like brownish type color. And we're just gonna Put that paint down uh, using pretty thick brush strokes with some force with the brush, putting the brush on the canvas. And then once we get it on there, then we just gently go back and forth with the up and down, back and forth motions. And that's gonna help to keep, keep it kind of painterly, but still give us a blend. And as we keep moving down, we're gonna add more purple and more cerulean. That was way too much cerulean. So now we gotta mix in more purple uh, and some of our bronze yellow color, and I want more purple. And that's maybe a bit too dark, so I'm gonna mix in some of my light ultramarine, more purple, and a little umber. And that's lighter, I like that more. Uh, and then, yep, just following this diagonal. So we're closely getting uh, almost to this same diagonal line that we have with the shoreline here. And, and we're going back and forth. Up and down. And then once we get that down, 
same thing, go back and forth, up and down. Just trying to blend it out, but keep it still kind of painterly, so we still see a little bit of that brushwork, but it's not, not a perfectly smooth transition, but it's not like we don't have like a harsh blob of paint like that. Like we want to try to soften things out, but still be able to see some of the brush strokes. All right, and then we're just keep getting more brown. So we're going to add more brown, more of the yellow oxide color, and more purple. And same thing, put that color down. Use nice, good force pressing that brush into each little bit of the canvas so we don't leave any white space. And then once you get it on there, use less force, lightly pull the paint up to blend it up, and go back and forth, couple up and down, couple back and forth. And as we get closer here, I want to use even more purple and midnight blue. It's pretty dark, like right in here. It's just like purpley, bluish brown. I'm gonna use just a little bit of umber right by the shore. Maybe in a couple spots. Okay, and there's, now just like that, we've got the water blocked in. And another great thing about acrylic paint is that this layer should dry, you know, within 15 minutes or so, dry enough that I can start layering over it. Uh, so while that's drying now, we can move, you know what, actually I'm gonna take some white and a little bit of uh, that yellow oxide color. And I'm just gonna put a couple little brush strokes in here to give more of like that hazy, glossy, glazy, not glossy, and glazy <laughs> look on the like stagnant water. And I'm gonna take a little bit more of this light blue color and I'm gonna carry that down a bit more over here too. So I'm just giving myself a little more variation so it's not that perfect painterly transition just so it gets a little choppy in some spots. And you'll see like as this is starting to get tackier, the paint is starting to dry a bit. It does get a little bit more difficult to work with. So if you did make like a big mistake here and like something just looks really off, my recommendation would be to let that all dry and then uh, kind of start from the highest up point that you can without having to rework all the trees. If you do have to rework all the trees, that's okay. Um, but yeah, get back to that point where you can start to re get a color that almost matches, uh, re-blend and then work your way back down. I just want to Seeing a couple little white spots, just want to fill those in. Maybe put in a couple little bits where the light's reflecting, or light is uh, poking through the trees here. All right, good. Now I'm gonna let that sit. Uh, working on this bottom section, I'm just gonna use my filbert brush, getting the extra paint off of it. And we're gonna start with our olive green with a little bit of midnight blue and some umber. And I'm just gonna fill this in. As you can see, this is kind of a translucent color and that means that if I put that down and then I put this over top of it, you can still kind of see what's under it. I mean, now it blended because it was wet, but. <laughs> You can still kind of see the other paint under it. Uh, so you might need to do a couple layers, sap green and olive green, sometimes are more translucent and not as opaque. Uh, so you might just have to do a couple layers or blend them in with more brown and blue to get more of the opaque look. Uh, but I'm starting with this first layer here, mixing in a bit more brown, Thalo green, olive green, a little bit of purple. 
keeping some nice shadows. Just doing up and down brush strokes, fuzzing out the spot where the water meets the grass. Just going over that. Fuzzy back and forth brush strokes. Okay, we can mix in more midnight blue and umber. Some of that yellow oxide color. We've got a deeper shadow like right in here. There's like a couple sections of grass and there's a shadow in this section. So I'm just blocking that in, take a little bit more umber. And I'll get this other shadowy section in the lower corner. Okay, that's looking good. And next I want to go to my lily pads. So since this is wet, this is pretty dry up here. It's still a little bit tacky wet in that shallow section. I'm going to start with the lily pads farther up and then we'll make our way down. So I want to get the extra water off of this brush. I want it to be nice and smooth, filbert brush. And we're going to start with white, and these are pretty light in color. Uh, we're going to use some olive green, light ultramarine blue. They're super light in color. I just want to tone down that green a little bit, so I just mixed in a little bit of purple. Okay, I'm going to see how this looks. They're pretty light. Uh, so now I'm holding this at an angle so it's not giving me those thick brush strokes but thin brush strokes. And we're just gonna go like that. Yep, I love that color, that's great. All right, and we're just gonna block in where we wanna put some lily pads. You might need to get a little bit of water on your brush if it's giving you streaky lines. And you can do this as quickly or as slowly and controlled as you'd like um, because these ones are farther in the background. They're not as much of a focal point. So you can speed this section up if you want. But yeah, just very gently holding the brush. Just picking some random spots to put my little lily pads. I'm gonna have a couple coming off the page so they're not all perfectly centered in the frame. So uh, your lily pads should be lighter in value than the water, which means they should be lighter, not darker than the color of your water, than the, how light or dark your water is, yeah. You can have a few like touching, connecting, and a little cluster. And there are so many lily pads in this reference photo. I don't want to have that many in my painting. Uh, so I'm just going to pick and choose where I want to place some. But there are a lot in the reference photo. Continuing to use that same color. I'm actually going to mix in a little bit more of my 
ultramarine, or sorry, my uh, thalo green, my yellow oxide, and a bit more of the purple color. And a little bit more purple. Yeah, that's good. And yep, keep blocking them in. They are gonna start to get a bit more round as they get closer to the foreground because our angle is looking more down at them and less out. So these ones have more of a flat look and the ones in the foreground are gonna have a bit more of the uh, rounded shape. And just pick and choose wherever you'd like to put some. This is your pond painting, so you can do as many or as few lilies, lily pads as you'd like. And this is just the base layer. We are gonna do a bit more to add some shadows under a few of these. And that's gonna help give a bit more depth and make some stand out from other ones. Some of them are kind of like layered on top of other ones. Gotta mix a little more color here. Get a bit of yellow. As you can see, I'm starting to get closer to the foreground here and the shape is becoming a more rounded of an oval than these kind of flat ovals that we had over there. Mix a little bit more of my ochre in there, or oxide color. All right, let's start adding some more on this side here. Sometimes it's hard to pick where you want to put them. <laughs> you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to underdo it. <laughs> And again, we're just sticking with the same type of color for now. Uh, we'll start to add a little bit more variation and some shadows and highlights uh, after we get these just blocked in, deciding where we're gonna put them all. Starting to get more round. As we're getting closer to the viewer, I'm gonna mix a bit more thalo green in there too as we're getting closer. A little bit of oxide with that and some white. Oh, 
I was uh, surprised with the poll results. I had this painting and a painting of the mountains in Washington State. This is from a pond in Michigan uh, where we stayed at an RV park. Uh, and this one was selected over the mountains in Washington State for the next painting tutorial. <laughs> so if you guys voted for this one, let me know why you like this one more. I'm probably going to do a tutorial for the other one as well. I just decided to, to go with this one first because it's what you guys voted on. As they're getting more round, it might be easier to hold the brush like this and do like more of a small circle shape to get the more rounded shape. And I want you to also take a look at the size of your lily pads that you're painting in. Uh, this one is about this big and these guys back here are about half that size so the ones farther back should definitely be smaller length and width uh, from your lily pads in the foreground There's a little more white and some oxide. I'm just going to put a few more over here and then I'm going to say that we're good. I'm going to say that's good enough for uh, my lily pads. So we're going to leave those there, uh, let those dry for a bit and continue working on the foreground. So for the foreground, I'm going to take my liner brush now, take some of that uh, olive green and some purple and some midnight blue and some yellow, cad yellow light and a little bit of white because it's just a little too deep of a shadow for me. Uh, and we're just gonna, let's also mix in some phthalo green and a little more yellow. That's better. All right, and I'm dipping the brush in the water a bit so that I have a thinner paint to work with and it's a little easier to uh, put that onto the painting here. So just taking this thicker liner brush and just starting with a couple little lines that are they're not perfectly f straight. They're not all up and down, going in different directions. These are just some tall grasses by the water. And uh, you'll see the more force you put with the brush, the thicker your lines are and the thinner, uh, the lighter you press, the thinner your lines will be. Unless you have too much paint, then you'll probably still get some pretty thick lines. <laughs> All right, so I'm starting to cover up a couple of these little lily pads. And that's okay, because there are gonna be flowers in front of these anyway. Get a little bit more in green. And you can make some of your grasses a little taller than the other ones. Just gives it more of that wild look. All right, 
And then I'm going to have some flowers here. We're going to do one coming up right there. Another little one right there. Another little guy like right there. Big tall guy right here. And one more little angled guy like right there. Yep, that'll look good. And I just marked that there for now so I know where there's where they will be. Uh, now I'm going to take more yellow, cad yellow light with white. A little bit of my phthalo green. A little more of my light ultramarine blue. And some of my oxide. A little bit more white. If you guys have a palette knife like this guy, you're welcome to use that for blending as well. That makes your uh, brushes get a little bit less of a beating, but I tend to just not take good care of my paintbrushes. So <laughs> that's, that's why I do that. Okay, uh, let's now add some highlights. So I'm doing the same thing I just did, adding more grasses, um, but now we're getting some highlights. So some of them are going right in front of those dark ones that I put down. Some of them are just brand new little blades of grass. And this just helps give us some more depth. Uh, now I'm just taking more of my olive green and I'm adding even more blades in front. So now we no longer really see that edge that we originally painted in for the where the shore meets the grass. Just mix in a little more thalo green. I'm trying to get a good variety here. I don't want my grass blades to all be the exact same color. Carrying that down there. And we'll do some more shadows. So I'll mix in some more umber and midnight blue and olive green. That'll give us more deeper shadows in this section. Just kind of keeping these shadows a little lower, not really covering up the full highlights that I put in. Take more of just that green. Putting that right on the canvas, that nice olive green, super saturated green color. All right, that looks good. Now I'm gonna mix in some white, more olive green, and a little more ochre or oxide. So this is a bit warmer. And now we're gonna to start to add some highlights to this section of grass. And we're gonna kinda of go over that shadowy section but not really fully covering much of the blades of grass that we already put down. You wanna cover like maybe the bottom half of some of the blades but not too much. So that we get like two clear sections of like highlight, shadow. I'm gonna take just some umber Put a few of those little streaks in here. Take more of my yellow, cad yellow light, white and oxide. And we'll do some more little highlights. And we're slowly making our way to this bottom corner, adding all these little highlights and more blaze of grass. Gonna add more of that pure green, olive green. Yeah, it's looking nice. Okay, and then I'm gonna take more of my deeper shadowy green. I'm gonna add a few more little flower stems here with some white on them just so they stand out a little more. This can be 
one too. Put one there. And let's do one like here. Mm hmm. Under here. One kind of in there. All right. That looks nice. Now I'm going to go back to the lily pads. Uh, so for the lily pads, still using my liner brush. Now I'm going to start to add in some other little colors real quick. So we have uh, some of this like oxide with a little bit of purple, maybe a tiny bit of green in there uh, for a few of them that are like under the water a bit. Uh, there's a little white, it's actually lighter. So then we'll put a little highlight on those. Uh, a couple of them back in here. And the, it's kind of messy. It's not just like a very obvious solid section where these are lighter, but they, they are in here. So I'm just picking a couple little spots to add some of that color. And it makes it so pretty. I'm mixing more purple in uh, that ochre color uh, just to get a little bit more of a shadow on some of them, especially closer to the foreground. Okay, that looks good. Uh, now that those are in there, I want to add some shadows for the lilies, lily pads. Uh, so we're taking our Thalo and Umber, Midnight Blue, and Umber. I'll do a little bit of that yellow. Okay, and then I'm just going to take a little water just to thin that down a bit, get a little more control, and do a little more Thalo Green, I think. Okay, and then uh, some of these, uh, you know what, needs, needs more brown. <laughs> Keep battling between, is this a warm or is this a cool shadow? All right, so there we've got, it's a little bit more on the brownish green side. So now we can just add in some shadows, not under every single one, but under quite a few of them. And you can do a little line that goes part way onto your lily pad where there's that little um, mark in the lily pad. So again, I'm not doing this for every one, but definitely more on the ones in the foreground. And this can also help you to smooth your edges out a bit uh, if your lily pads are having a a little bit too uh, fringy of edges or not, you know, solid lines for the edges. And this will also help to separate your lily pads if you have a lot overlapping like I do. And don't forget to leave some without this. You don't want every single one to have a very visible shadow under it. These are for ones that are like in the foreground or are like overlapping another one and it's very obvious that there's a crease and a shadow where it's overlapping another lily pad. And as you get farther in the background, you should probably mix in a little bit more of light ultramarine or white so that it's not quite as intense of a shadow.
And you don't notice as many in the far distance here. So I'm just doing a couple where I want to have my lily pad a little bit sharper. I'm going to take some that are just brown with a little bit of those other colors got mixed in. So like a neutral green-brown color. Okay, that's looking pretty nice. Okay, and we've got some that are kind of underwater. Uh, so I'm going to take some of my, my green with my umber and some magenta and yellow, just so we get like this brown, purplish neutral color. And we can start to add those in in a few spots. So they're darker, not quite as dark as the water is still. So you can just add a few of these in there, random spots. And then I'm going to take some of that uh, gr olive green and white. And there are a couple little, oops, yeah, a little more white, maybe some light ultramarine. There's some like algae and stuff growing. So I'm just going to dab that in here. And I'm starting to paint over the grass a little bit, but that's okay. Cause those, that's where my big flowers are. So that's going to get covered up anyway. A little bit more of that ochre color. Add a couple little highlights on the moss or algae, whatever this is. Okay, that looks pretty nice. Then I'm going to take um, a little bit more of my olive green and my light ultramarine. And I'm gonna do another little shadow on the ones that don't have that deep one, almost like an outline. And that's gonna keep giving me more depth and show that these have some weight to them and they're on something. They're not just little bits of color. And I'm adding a little bit of this to the ones with the darker shadows too, just to give like an outline on the top bit. And back here, it's just a quick little touch of some color. All right, that's looking good. Next, I'm going to take some white with my phthalo green and a little bit of that other green got in there too. Should be pretty nice and light. Uh, maybe a little bit of my yellow, cad yellow light too. And I want to try to get a highlight on a bunch of these lilies, lily pads. Uh, so the highlight will be on the center top part. This can give it more shape. And you don't want to do this to every single one. Again, we're just helping to get some variety in these lily pads here. Okay, and next I'm going to take some more of my blue with my light ultramarine blue, so midnight blue and light ultramarine blue, and a little brown, 
and I'm just gonna take this liner brush and I'm gonna outline a few of these. I want it to be a little darker than the color around it. So you can use this to help add in some more of the little uh, spots where it comes in on the lily pad, that little like tear thing. And again, we don't want to do this to every single one. Take a little more white as we're getting further back up. This is helping them to separate from the water a little more. It's a little bit darker as we're getting closer to the foreground again. Some more midnight blue and umber. While we're doing that, I think uh, the next thing I want to do is take a little bit more umber and just block in with the brush. Just go back and forth in a couple little spots, adding some variety to the water so that it doesn't just look like a smooth, solid block of color. So in between some of the lilies, lily pads, just a uh, Take a little bit of that brownish color. Then you can mix in a little bit of white with our light ultramarine and ochre. And again, start to add a little bit of this color in there, mostly near the foreground. This is where we can see a little bit more going on in the water. You can take more of our light ultramarine and add a little bit of this color in here. And we're just going back and forth, putting little dabs of this color just to give a couple little highlights of the water. Okay, I think it looks pretty. I'm going to do a few more highlights. So a little bit more yellow, cat yellow light and white on these guys. All right. Now it's starting to come to life a little bit more. If you want, you could take just like some brown and add a little, a little bit of some dabs of brown in there too. Okay, I'm liking that. Now I'm gonna switch to my 
little stubby uh, round tip brush and I'm gonna do the flowers. So I'm gonna start with my deep violet and some white. That is pretty close to the color that I need. I'm gonna mix a little ultra or um, midnight blue in there and a little bit of the magenta. And that's just gonna start out with the shadowy colors. So I'm just taking this brush and just dabbing where I'm gonna have my flowers. And they're just in little clusters right around the stalk. Okay, I think that looks good. I've got the, the base part blocked in. I'm gonna go back to my um, liner brush and take my white with my olive green and some oxide. And you know what? First I'm gonna start with more of the shadow color. So umber with olive green, a little bit of midnight blue. And just get a top for all of these little flowers, and then go back in with your highlights, so more oxide, olive, and white, and just dab a couple little dots of paint for the highlight section there. And then you can add a little bit more of the stem kind of peeking through the flowers, okay. Now we're gonna take white, and we're gonna do the highlights in the flowers. So we're gonna take our purple and white. A little more purple. And start to add little dabs of paint for the highlights. Most of the highlights are just at the tops of each flower. So leave a little bit for the shadow under where you put the initial shadowy dot. You want to make a little smaller dot and leave a little bit of that shadow color visible at the bottoms of each cluster. Okay, another one over here. Then I'm gonna mix in more purple and get like a mid tone in here. And also gives me a little more variety in the purple. And I'm just picking a couple little spots to dab that in. I'm gonna go back to the purple and midnight blue and just touch up a couple little shadows that I wanna rebuild. All right, so that looks nice. I'm gonna be done with this brush now. Go back to my little liner brush and I'm gonna take my light ultramarine blue with some of my magenta and white. And I've got these other pretty little flowers here. And I'm just starting from like a central point and pulling out the little brush strokes. Make sure they're not all the same. You wanna have a little variety. And the way that the brush, the petals are coming out from the center. And then I'm gonna take more white and just add a little highlight 
to the outer part of each of these little petals. Leaving the center with that base shadowy color. All right, you can take a little midnight blue, put a little dot in the center. All right, looking good. I've got a little bit of that like queen lace looking stuff. So I'm gonna take some uh, yellow, a little bit of that blue that I just blended in white, or my, uh, that was my yellow oxide color, sorry. And then I'm just gonna take this little brush and put a couple little Clusters of flower here. Very lightly dabbing. And little clusters kind of creating little clusters of flowers that are on the plant. And then maybe you'll see what else. Let's do one right here. And I think I'll do one. Well, I just noticed there are a couple actual lily flowers on the pond. So they're white lilies. They're really pretty. So I'm going to take some white. A tiny bit of magenta got in there, but that's okay. And we'll just add some flowers here. So we just start from center and pull down. Start from top and pull down to center. Let's actually start from the tops and pull down to the center. And it makes this nice little U shape. Let's add a couple more. And don't forget the flowers should get smaller as they're getting farther away. All right, and then for the shadows, we're gonna mix purple and a little bit of that light ultramarine and the ochre color, oxide color. And we'll just get a couple little shadows the base kind of coming up, a couple little spots. And we can get some reflections. Okay. Alrighty. The last thing I want to do is just add a couple more little highlights to the grasses here. So I'm gonna mix more of that oxide white and cad yellow light. And we'll just touch up a few of these little stems here. Maybe cover up a couple flowers so they're not perfectly obvious. Touch up some of the stems that got covered up in the water. take more of my olive green and cover up the bottoms of some of these highlights so it's not too harsh. Just use more of this nice green, olive green color here. And pretty close to being done guys. All right, I think that's 
I think I'm gonna put the brush down. Uh, you, know, you know what, one more final thing we can do is just a couple little dabs on these little queen lace of the dark green to help break up the flowers a little bit. Okay, cool. I'm gonna call that a finished painting, guys. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this painting of some lily pads on a pond and some nice little wildflowers in the foreground. If you have recommendations for future painting tutorials, please leave a comment under this video and I will add them to my list of things to paint. Have a wonderful day and happy painting. Bye-bye.